Hey friends, welcome to class. It's Flo again. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for taking the time to practice. This is going to be a vinyasa flow class with a well-rounded flow, total body practice. But we put a little bit more focus on the lateral lines and also the spiral lines. If you know about fascia meridians from anatomy trains, then you know there's uh, certain fascia layers and very dominant lines the front line the back line side spiral arm lines all kinds of good stuff and today we're focusing again full body a little bit more lateral lines to the sides all you need today is your mat if you have a block grab that too that's sometimes good to extend your reach otherwise let's begin in child's pose today Set everything up, take your time, come onto the knees, bring the knees apart. Let the upper body rest down between the thighs. Close your eyes for a moment, nice slow breaths through the nose and relax your forehead down to the mat as well. Feel the breath coming into the belly. In child's pose, notice how the back as well expands with every inhale. Set an intention for your practice today. What is it that's currently present in your life in this moment? What is it that you're working on? Could be something physical, could be something more inwards about yourself could be a life situation you're currently dealing with that you are working through whatever it is we want to move and act with intention blink your eyes open come up to a tabletop come onto all fours slide the hands back come onto the toes as well Keep the arms straight, quick wrist warm up, shift forward, feel the wrists and lean back. Shift forward and lean back. A little hold when you come forward and back. Internally rotate the hands, shift forward and back forward. Back one more forward and back. Externally rotate the hands forward and back. Shift forward and back forward back very nice the fingertips are now pointing towards the knees keep the arms straight lean back let the palms lift up as always in our classes if you have been around for a while and you have done all the 300 or more classes we have already on this channel you are very familiar with the wrist warm-up Start to bend one arm, then the other. Just move in a way that feels good for the forearms, the fingers, and the wrists. So you know how beneficial it is. But if you're new to this class, to this channel, welcome, first of all. Currently, I'm filming this from Mexico. Sending you many blessings from Mexico to your corner of the world. And wrist warm-ups are just so important, especially a lot of our classes are very strong, upper body focused, and you want to keep the wrists strong healthy and warm them up before you put any weight on them sit on the heels so we continue to stretch out the toes and the feet interlace your hands and make a infinity symbol with your hands it's this number eight that's laying down um, on the ground horizontally and then switch directions with this infinity symbol. Shake out the hands and come into a downward facing dog. Keep the knees bent for now, move the chest towards the thighs, open the shoulders, firm into the inner hands, especially into the index finger and the thumb. And then walk your dog, straighten one leg a little, then the other. Just arrive. 
I like to rotate both heels over to one side to lengthen out the side body. And then the other side. Connect to the breath. Nice and sl slow ujjayi breathing. That's the type of breathing we do in a yoga practice like this one. We also have a tutorial on ujjayi breathing and 10 or so other breathing exercises. So check those out. It's really all about the breath. That's why we put so much emphasis on the breathwork tutorials and ujjayi breathing. Start to roll through the spine forward to plank on an inhale. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, down dog. One more inhale, forward plank. Hold it there. Tuck your tailbone and engage the core. Firm into the inner hands, but at the same time, externally rotate the upper arms. So it might, might feel weird a little bit in the beginning to bring the inside of the hands down, but then externally rotate the upper arms. But with practice, you will get the feeling and uh, uh, be able to do the movement. Also, if you've been practicing for a while and you hear this for the first time, it also might take a little bit of time for you and, of course, practice to change your, your pattern and your habit. Shift forward, come high into the toes and lean back. Shift forward, back. Five, four, three, keep pushing the ground away. Two, one. Very good. One more shift forward, bend your arms, chaturanga. Elbows in, bend the arm, arms 90 degrees, shift more forward, hold for five, four, three, two, one. Lower all the way down. Untuck the toes, interlace your hands behind the back. Engage your glutes, lift the chest, the arms, the shoulders up off the ground and off your body. Reach your hands towards the heels, lower down with the chest. Lift, five, lower. Lift, four, lower. Lift, three, two, one, and hold. For 10, nine, eight, reach your hands more towards the heels, towards the feet, and lift your hands, your arms higher up, away from the body. Five, four, three, two, one. Release down. Beautiful job. Shake out the hips. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Press up to plank. Come onto the toes first. Lift your knees up. Lift your hips up. And then straighten your arms. Plank pose. Tuck the tailbone. Downward facing dog. Very good. Lift your right leg up and back. Three-legged dog. Hold it there. Keep the breath going. Start to bend your right knee. Open, stack the hips. Draw the right heel closer to your hips. Lower the right shoulder down. Come high onto your left toes. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, right knee to the right armpit. Hold it there, keep the breath going. Slide the knee down to the right wrist. Keep the breath going, it's nice and slow, soft. Lift the knee over to the left wrist. Pull the knee up towards the left armpit, towards the chest, flex the foot. On the exhale, as slow as you can, without any sounds, step the foot between hands. Crescent lunge, rise up. Make sure you can see the right big toe inside the right knee. Reach your left arm forward, the right arm back. Open crescent twist. Bring your right hand to touch the back, back side of your left leg. Reach your left arm up and over the head 
to the right side. A nice side body stretch on the left side body. Back to left arm forward, right arm back, open crescent twist. With your left hand reach forward, the left leg floats up, revolved half moon, right leg straight, the left leg is bent. And right, right, uh, right leg straight, the left leg is reaching back, I meant to say. The right arm is reaching up, the left hand is reaching down. Rotate the chest more to the right. Slow, deep breaths, ujjayi breathing. Very good. Now cross the left ankle behind the right. Fold forward and down. Be mindful here of your left knee. Now slide your left foot all the way to the right side. Keep your left leg straight, but start to bend your right leg. So it's very important the right leg is bent, the left leg is straight. Left fingertips to the ground, flex both feet so that the toes are reaching up towards the knees. Reach your right arm up. Now stay here or start to straighten your right leg more. Perhaps you feel then a sensation in the outside area of the right hip. Plant the right foot down, find a good foundation there and come up for tree pose. Bring the left foot inside the right shin or inside the right thigh. Hands to the heart, push your hips forward. At the same time, pull the left knee back. Nice opener for the left hip and also, of course, a balancing pose. The option to stay in tree pose or you cross the left ankle over the right thigh for standing pigeon. Send the hips back, keep that left foot flexed. Again, pointing and reaching towards the left knee to keep the knee safe. Hands to the heart, send the hips back and down. Hold it there. Draw the belly in. Let's all release all together wherever you are. Come up to standing on the right leg. Draw the left thigh towards the chest. Hands to the heart, extend the left leg back, warrior three. You're reaching back through the left leg and forward through the spine. Create some length. Soften the breath. Hands to the heart, press the palms together. Lower the left hip more down. So it's on the same height as the right hip. Keep pushing the ground away with the right leg. Let's take one more deep breath in. Exhale, step the left foot back. Big step. Bring the left hand down to the ground. Wild thing. Bring the right foot up and over behind the left calf. The toes land. Keep the heel lifted. Engage your glutes. Lift your hips up high. Firm into the inside part of your left hand. Push the ground away. Lift those hips. And then draw the right knee towards the right armpit. Hold it there. Look inside the left hand. Step the right foot there. Step the left foot forward as well. For chair pose. Let's all meet in chair. Reach both arms up. Very good. Reach the arms higher up towards the ears. Start to lift your heels up so you're only on the toes. Breath is soft, nice and slow. Controlled, you got it. Squat all the way down, boat pose. Point the toes. Reach the arms forward. 
option to stay or lower down to a uh, low boat. Or arms over the head and then maybe rock for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Come back up to boat. I'm on a very squeaky part of the floor <laughs> in this spot right now. Now from boat pose we're coming to a chaturanga. So you set the feet down, come up to a squat, try to not use your hands and then step or float the feet back, bend your arms, chaturanga and we'll meet in chaturanga. <laughs> Sounds good? Let's go for it. Hold it there, shift forward, five, four, elbows in, three, two, one. Plank, straighten the arms, tuck the tailbone, engage the core, knees down, elbows down, glide forward and through, upward facing dog as you inhale. Broaden the collarbones, keep the glutes strong, engaged. Look straight ahead on your exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your left leg up and back, three-legged three dog. Bend your left knee, open, stack the hips. Lower the left shoulder down. Come high into your right toes, inhale. Exhale, left knee to the left armpit. Slide the knee down to the left wrist. Over to the right wrist. Back up to the right armpit, to the chest, flex the left foot. On your exhale, without any sound, slow, step the foot between the hands. Crescent lunge, rise up. Reach your right arm forward the left arm back. With your left hand now grab somewhere the back side of your right leg. Reach your right arm up and over the head to the left. Breathe into the right side upper body where we create length. Back to open crescent twist. Reach the right arm forward. Shift forward, revolved half moon, right hand down, left arm up, reach the right leg back, straighten both legs. Cross your right ankle behind the left, fold forward and down. Now slide the right foot all the way to the left. Come to the knife edge of both feet. Flex both feet, right fingertips down. Your right leg is straight, the left leg is bent. Reach your left arm up. Rotate the chest to the left and upwards towards the ceiling. Either stay here or start to straighten your left leg more. Play around with it and feel into the left hip. Now plant the left foot down, good foundation. We're coming up slowly for tree pose. Be careful with the knees, move slowly 
mindfully three poses where we meet. Hands to the heart. Push the hips forward, pull the right knee back. Just gently to increase the sensation. You don't want to push the hips so far forward that you are in a back bend. Or that it looks like a standing back bend. Just, eno just enough so that you can feel it. Maybe from the outside it's not even visible. Stay here or standing pigeon, cross the right ankle over the left thigh. Send the hips back. Hands to the heart, flex the right foot. The toes are pointing and reaching towards the right knee. That's all release wherever you are, tree pose or standing pigeon. Come up to standing on the left leg, draw the right, right thigh towards the chest. Hands to the heart, send the right leg back, warrior three. Feel the weight distribution in your left foot, your base. Hands to the heart, reach back through the right leg, lower the right hip more down. Lengthen through the spine more, so the crown of the head is reaching forward as well. Last deep breath in. Exhale, step the right foot back, right hand down inside the left foot. Wild thing, step the left foot up and over behind you. Land the toes, keep the left heel lifted. The right leg is straight. Lift those hips, reach your left arm up and over your head. Glutes are engaged. Soften the breath more. Now draw the left knee towards the left armpit. Look inside the right hand, step the left foot there. Step the right foot forward as well. Chair pose. Lift the heels. Core is engaged, the arms reach up towards the ears. Bend your knees a bit more and then squat all the way down. Set the hips down. Bring the hands behind you for reverse tabletop. The fingertips are pointing to the outside edges of the mat. So they're pointing to the right and left. Lift those hips up. Bring the head back to a position that feels good for you. Start to move the hips forward and back. Very good. Lower the hips down. Maybe lean back a little bit and bring the right ankle over the left thigh. And then push into your hands, move the chest forward towards the right shin, so it's a variation of a figure four. We're targeting the right outer hip. Keep that right foot, the top foot flexed. Now firm into the left foot and lift your hips up. So we're coming into reverse tabletop, but only on one foot. Lift the hips up as high as you can. Don't force anything. Glutes are strong. And lower down. Very good. Bend your arms, lean back slightly. Bring that right foot out, back down to the ground. And switch sides. So the left ankle comes on top of the right thigh. Try to not use your hands. And then push into the hands to move the chest towards the left shin, towards your legs. That left foot, keep that nice and flexed. It helps protect the left knee. A 
And let's lean into the hands, lift the hips up, press into the right foot, lift the hips up as high as possible. It's normal that one side is different than the other. Hold it there, slow the breath down, deep controlled breathing. And release. Very good. Lean back again. Bring that left foot out and back down to the ground. Straighten your legs. Let's come into a seated forward fold. We'll finish up class here. Flex both feet. And then keep the legs straight. Grab the feet if you can. But if not, and if the feet are too far away, it's also okay, no problem. So you bend the feet first. That's a good recommendation for anyone anyway. Bend the feet, for, bend the knees first, grab the feet, and then scoot the hips back until you feel a sensation of a stretch. If that's where you feel a stretch, stay there. If you have to straighten your legs, then you stay there. And it's totally fine that if you're just starting out or you have any other things with your body, your body is unique, then you might not be able to straighten the legs right now. And it's also fine. We're still all looking for the same sensation in the hamstrings, the calf, maybe the back. And then focus on the breath and relax. I remember when I started practicing, I was nowhere close to doing this. Actually, when I started practicing, I was in a lot of pain, a lot of back pain and sciatica that what brought me into yoga. At that point, I already had been uh, meditating for several years. So I was already familiar with the mindfulness practice, but never heard of yoga for some reason. And then discovered it through physical pain and suffering, which I completely healed through yoga. I have, uh, Bri and I, we both have several videos on, on back pain. If if you can relate to it. Let's do about five more breaths here in silence. Move the forearms more down to the mat than the head to the legs. Slowly release, walk the hands back, push yourself back up. Now there's two options, you can either come onto your back for Shavasana, bring the feet, the legs wide apart, just relax on your back, or you come to a seated position, which is what I will do. I will also rotate, but you don't have to. So you can either come onto your back or seated. Onto the back is a nice way to fully close out the practice if you are planning on continuing with your breathwork practice or with a meditation or some other specific drills, then it's better to come to a seated position um, and then use that as the transition into your uh, practice that's coming after this. Close your eyes wherever you are. Relax your body, find that, sp find that space where you can fully surrender seated or on the back, doesn't matter. Notice the air coming in through the nose and out through the nose. With your inhale, grow a little bit taller. Lengthen the crown of the head upwards. And on the exhale, you stabilize this position in a very effortless way. Continue to observe the breath, how the air is coming in through the nose and out through the nose for the next two or three minutes.
slowly come back to the body. Take a few deep breaths. Notice the sounds around you. Notice the smells. Feel your own body again. Bring those hands to the heart, the palms touch. And thank yourself for showing up. Thank yourself for making it through the entire class, for giving your best, and most importantly for carving out time out of your day to come practice. Thank you very much for practicing with me today. And thank you for allowing me to share my practice with you. If you want to see more videos like this one, please support the channel by liking the video, leave a comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video tomorrow. With love and gratitude. Namaste.